Hey everybody, welcome back, Issues of Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Ultimate Spider-Man is back on the couch, baby. Here we go again. Ka-ching. Oh my god, you guys, and you're in for a doozy. A lot happens in this one. This is Spider-Man and his amazing friends from Brian Michael Bennis and Stuart Eminem. And that's right, Spider-Man makes some amazing friends that he already made. They're all getting acclimated to each other, and then they'll leave. Right. But they'll come back later. See, you don't want this to be an all-time thing. That would be lame. <laughs> Unless it is an all-time thing, which it was for a little while, and that wasn't lame. In 1983, there was a cartoon show called Spider-Man and His Amazing <laughs> Friends. And it is emblematic of the issue I've had forever with the influence that multimedia has on culture and the disparity between movies and television and comic books. Despite the fact that comic books are the creation of some of your most popular and beloved characters, TV and movies will always be the dominating influence on them. Mm. For example, there's a terrible cartoon show <laughs> called Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends, which is technically not really even a sequel to the 1981 Spider-Man animated series with the same narrator, but different voice actors for Spider-Man, in which the first one, Spider-Man is alone but fights Doctor Doom at least three times. <laughs> And in the second one, he just lives with Firestar and Iceman for no reason. Oh, and a dog. <laughs> Ms. Lion, yes. Yeah, he knows about Ms. Lion. <laughs> Ms. Lion's not even from the effing comic books. And what's worse is when the comic books go, I'm putting Ms. Lion in the book. Don't pat yourself on the back for making references to 60 year old <laughs> concepts that weren't that great to begin with. I defy you to watch more than two episodes of that show. I loved that show because when I was growing up, there was no Spider-Man cartoon. There was promised to be never a Spider-Man movie. All I had was ancient cartoon shows on VHS for way too much money that you could buy at stores like Sam Goody. These you are all references that are- Two episodes for like whoosh. $12. Yeah, I'm not, they are not worth that. They're not worth anything. Certainly I watched a lot of Spider-Man and X-Men cartoon shows from VHSs that I bought or bootlegged, and then eventually, you know, TV started to catch up and they made so, all kinds of different cartoons. So there's an FBI warning at the beginning of that. Yeah, you're not You've allowed. You've outed yourself. Oh no! They're coming for you! <laughs> you know what that- Prove it! <laughs> you know what that sounds like? That, just sticking them with two other characters? Yeah. That sounds like some Hanna-Barbera shit. Right. That sounds like- Well, Scooby-Doo's working. What if it was a shark? <laughs> yeah. Or a living car? <laughs> yeah, or like Snagglepuss and- I don't know, Yogi Bear or yeah. something, you know, just there's like. Actually, there's an equally ancient but still newer reference you could make. Do you remember when Pinky and the Brain moved from the lab to Elmira's house? Yes. No. Yeah, and they had the audacity to change the opening credits and the theme so that it was like Pinky and the Brain and Elmira. And Tiny Toon Adventures, I think, was canceled by then. So it's like, what, what? <laughs> And it's literally just Pinky and the Brain, but they are in Elmira's bedroom. Same show, but with an X Factor being Elmira. Yeah, I, every once in a while she shows up. If you want a more topical reference, just string together all the opening credits of the Fairly Odd Parents <laughs> and watch that show just embrace every sellout <laughs> convention you could possibly think of to stay on the air. You know, it started when the Fairly Odd Parents got poof their baby, and it just gets worse from there. Spider-Man's not working on his own. Shove him with an X-Man and a character we invented for the cartoon show. Firestar did not exist pre-Spider-Man and his amazing friends. And the comic books really had to go weird. like, I guess we could put her in the book. Here's Firestar, no one's favorite character. And you're like, no! No, back then I was Get like, out of here. because I was introduced to the character through the show mm, that I was lucky to have. That, that was a stupid no, no, no. idea. Well, I, I didn't know it was a stupid idea, but I did embrace it. I was like, oh look, it's Firestar from that show I watch. Well, see, and you were a child. Yeah. And that's who these are for. So like, right, it worked. But, but also- That's why they do it. This is in the 2000s. You have no business making this reference anymore. And they're still doing it today. Well, of course they were gonna make that reference. Yeah. They all grew up with this. They're like, hey, now I have influence. Yeah. I remember something. That's right. Here it is. Here's the thing. And Firestar and slash Iceman don't have anything to do like the original cartoon show with Spider-Man. So like, this is just, this is for no one. Or from it all the readers over 40. It's just a reference. Iceman yeah. is a mutant and knows Kitty Pride, and Kitty Pride dated Spider-Man in this. 
That is, well, you're the only connection. How prescient you are. That's right. <laughs> and Firestar was invented for the cartoon show. She should be invented for this book. Not that they have to do that, but they do. Was she a mutant in the cartoon show? Yes, she was. Okay. She was a mutant, right. yeah. And I guess they were just like, well, we need a fire one. But Yep. And we want to be a girl, yep. but there is no fire... Based, based female, female character that we can so, think of or want to pay for. So we'll just make one. Because so we'll in my head, I'm like, why would the they Phoenix. just... Well, yeah. That would be very complicated. <laughs> Is it complicated? Sure. She's but too she powerful. Exists. Oh no, it's Green Goblin! Whoa! Oh, I blew up the moon. <laughs> I mean, Everybody's having an like... overpowered character where you have to hold them back every time. That sounds exhausting and also something that Hollywood would not be able to resist. I mean, they made two bad Phoenix movies by the same person. They love that character. But yes, I think and there's scuttlebutt that says that maybe they were thinking Mary Jane would be Firestar, and thank God what? that that is either fake or never happened because because well, she has red hair. Yeah, that's right. And so if it did happen, that means that Mary Jane would have absolutely become Firestar, oh my God. and she would have been ruined forever. That's right. As it stands in the current continuity, she has luck-based roulette powers. It's what? Spider-Man is very, very frustrating if you're reading it week to week. She, she's not supposed to have powers. I know. Well, in Ultimate Spider-Man though, she does. She has uh, uh, goblin, goblin powers. powers. She can turn into a big hairy goblin, I think twice in the so entire lifespan of the You can blame Ultimate Spider-Man for, for breaking the no. seal on well, Mary Jane having powers. This story introduces Firestar and also has Iceman in the book so I can justify putting all three of them on the cover to get those lapsed readers from 1983. <laughs> Thank you. That being said, it's a great volume. I love it. It's in the comments down below. Buy it. It's great. No, I love it because it's just, it's volume 20 of Ultimate Spider-Man. It's just more Ultimate Spider-Man. There's more talking in this than there is in like Endgame. You know, it's just so much dialogue and character work and it's it's just fun. I love it. But I don't know if it's going to make for a show. Oh, and we'll there's see. There's a fire and ice character in DC, right? Yes, uh, yeah. fire and ice. But her fire is green and... They're more of like a duo, like a dynamic duo. Yeah. They are also on the Justice League International, but... You know. And uh, this is Firestar and Ice Man, right. so it's completely different. Yeah. Those are different names. It's actually more derivative, I'd say. Fire and Ice, that's like elemental. Mm. Firestar, what even is that? Ice Man, wow. I mean, that's original. every star is fire. Well, all right. Mm, it's redundant, plasma? if anything. Or plasma? I don't <laughs> know how plasma. Sorry, okay, yeah. there we go. All right, yeah, we got some science on this episode. <laughs> so the convention of the opening of this is great because we're basically introduced to, like, who some of the main players are going to be in this volume. I'm guessing Spider Man? Yeah, obviously. But <laughs> cool. each of them gets one full page of them doing some mundane activity that is re that is related to their mundane lives. Right. See, they're normal people. Yes, but like, and and each of them gets their own first person POV narration. So like, Peter's trying to read Einstein, and he can't concentrate because Harry died in the last volume, mm. and he's still really broken up about it. And I mean, don't forget, like maybe like nine or ten months ago, Uncle Ben was also shot. Right. So like, you know, he's had a rough hasn't time. Hasn't even been a full year. Yeah, I, I don't even know. I honestly, Who I, knows? I couldn't say. But well, he's, the school year hasn't ended, right? So it's no, he hasn't like yeah. moved on to the next phase. But yeah. Uh, yeah, he's sad or he's distracted, and so you know, he's actually trying to figure out why he can't concentrate. And then he remembers holding his dead friend in his arms, and he's like, no. oh yeah, and that completely drags him back down. Then we're introduced to Kong, Kenny, Flash Thompson's former butt monkey who extricated himself from that group and has made moves to hook up with Kitty Pride. And he recognizes that he's looking to increase his metabolism, so he's trying to work out. So he's just doing that thing that teenagers do in their rooms. <laughs> Not that one, the other one, where he's working out. And he's just like trying oh, to do push Oh, it's a workout, all right. Oh, yeah. He's just, he's just trying for the first time in his life to actually like work out and right. be in shape. And do push-ups. Why does he look like a 40-year-old man? Because he's bald. bald and he has a goatee. Like, like a he, full goatee. Yes, does he look like a divorced dad? Sure. <laughs> when you're asking your comic book artist to draw a 15-year-old boy who's bald with a goatee, it's like... It's gonna be hard for it to not look. I like mean, like, movie. you might as well ask me to draw a horse. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's gonna be a stretch. Or a bicycle. Or a bicycle or a car. <laughs> so Kenny's working out and he's just thinking to himself about how he's like, I think... Kitty might be interested in me, but I want to, you know, everyone she's been with is either been- I want to buff up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, and like- She's only been with Jack. She's Jones. only been with superheroes. <laughs> I have to at least try to compete. And also, I wish that Peter would tell me he's Spider-Man because then I could commiserate with him. Like I could talk to him about Kitty 
and understand this better. And, you're and, like, and Harry, I assume. Yeah, but I don't really know. it. He knew Harry, but they weren't really that close. But even still, he's like, I, I wish I could talk to Peter. I don't have any more friends. Mm. But also, hey, Kenny knows Peter Spider-Man. And I think he figures that out like a while ago, but mm-hmm. we're reinforcing yeah. that Kenny still knows. Why yeah. does he just and he tell him a rap on it. We'll, we'll get into there. Uh-huh. Yeah, and, he, and he's, be, he's being a bro. Meanwhile, <laughs> Mary Jane is at the mall and she's working at the food court. Now this is of course set in the past because there's people at this mall. But <laughs> she is miserable because she knows everyone that she knows is a superhero or cool and not working at the mall. And <laughs> so while she's working there, she bumps into Liz Allen. Liz Allen was her friend when Mary Jane was popular and inevitably Liz uh, falls off the face of the earth uh, and now she's back and she's having, you know, girl problems. A lot of cramps and headaches and nausea and stuff like that. But these are not related to her uh, cycles. This is instead uh, an indication of things to come. The Firestars uh, to come. Oh. Now, unlike the original Firestar, who was, of course, Angelica Jones, uh, invented to force for the cartoon show from 83, this is Liz Allen. And Liz Allen, in the original continuity, that is to say the Marvel 616 universe, was Peter's first crush, who technically had a crush on him, who was also Flash Thompson's girlfriend, and inevitably became Harry Osborn's wife and the head of the former corporation that in 2099 will be called Alchemex. That's a lot of baggage. If you remember anything from the previous volumes, she had a real phobia about mutants. You know, like I remember the the teacher at one point trying to like talk about, hey, if you were a superhero, what would your superhero name be? What would your costume be? She's like, yeah, hi, um, my mom thinks this is inappropriate and like I don't want to get the school board involved, but like I already did. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I know you. So she's that, but was, now she's having a hard time. Was Liz Allen in 616 also Firestar or she's nope. not, that's new here? It's, that's only for this. Okay. In, in 616, Liz Allen didn't really ever have powers and inevitably became unrecognizable to her original creation. But Angelica Jones, the actual name of Firestar, did get ported over to the 616, and her name is Angelica Jones. And she's a mutant. Okay. Okay. But don't even worry about that. Okay. There's yeah, so, she doesn't exist here. No. she Angelica Jones may exist in this because Bendis loves to throw around names and just have these characters show up, but then forget, and then have different versions of those characters show up. Okay. And you're just like, wait. And he's like, don't worry about that. <laughs> like when Firestar appears, someone sees her on TV and she's like, wow, she's amazing. My name's Angelica Jones and I wish I could be like her. <laughs> I mean, that might as well be in the book. So then we have Liz and she's just kind of like hiding in the food court and realizes that she's having these like problems, but then suddenly they just go away. And she's like, oh, okay. And then we check in with Johnny Storm and Johnny Storm the Human Torch is on a date with this vapid social media obsessed girl. And his internal monologue is just like, you asked me out and you're texting the whole time. <laughs> I would rather be doing anything else. I'm Human Torch. I've been in other dimensions. I don't have to put up with this shit. I don't have to put up with this. I'm Human Torch, man. And then she goes, okay, uh, they're here, good. And he's like, what? Paparazzi arrives. She texted them. Oh my Or tweeted God. about them. She's like, now I can be seen on a date with Human Torch. And he's like, Egh. And then we check in with Kitty, who of course transferred she was transferred. She didn't do it on purpose. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Professor X kicked her out. That's right. Yeah, she got kicked out of the Xavier Institute. Now, she, because of gerrymandering, she's at Peter's high school. How awkward. And so she's just sitting there at the lunchroom, and everyone's just looking at her because, like, she's the only one that they know has superpowers. Right. And so and she's a dirty beauty. That's right. Well, yeah. some of them are racist, but others are just kind of like, oh. do a flip. Or, like, do you're really impressive. Roll. Yeah. So she uh, just walks out in the middle of the room and then phases to the floor and ends up in the gym and I'm like there's no way the gym is in the basement but okay and uh, so <laughs> then we cheer uh, no we just they're, they're more like oh that'd be amazing if they were like yay like in the Simpsons we're like do the line Bart I love the fact that she leaves her dirty tray on the table and doesn't clean up someone after will take care of that yep. right they used to do that all the time I'm doing tricks for you you'll clean up my tray well in the Xavier Institute there used to be a kid his name was Garbage Man and his powers were that he made garbage into uh, sm- sweet smelling roses um, that's sad. <laughs> that's, I mean, although Beak that would have solve, words. That would solve a lot of problems, dude. Yeah, <laughs> in right. The, yeah, hey, garbage boy, get in the friggin' uh, landfill over there. <laughs> just roses. Oh. Anyway, how was she able to fall through the floor into the gym and not like break her legs? Does she fly? No. She's a mutant. It's <laughs> the end. The end. Uh, yeah, uh, she's had a lot of training. She has good muscle control. Uh, 
She falls from the ceiling of a gym, which notoriously have high ceilings. Absolutely. Straight down to the floor. Straight down to the floor, and then no just injuries. like lands. Yes. So maybe she maybe. rolls. All you gotta do is roll when you hit the ground. No, she does not. Uh, she uses part of her phasing ability to slow herself down while she's going through the right, floor. Right, she's phasing like, through wind. Like, she's actually more like floating because she's, yeah, she's intangible until she hits the ground. That's what I'll, 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 I'll cotton to that, yeah. I was saying that she used the ceiling to slow herself down like with a partial phase. Oh. But, well, that works. Yeah, like, no. what, so part of the ceiling's like going through her molecules? Like, now that, that was that Ben's suggestion. Her. No, I like the idea that like, no, she, she phases so that she, she phases through the air itself. Yeah, then she'd go faster because there'd be no air resistance. Oh, yeah. But Although she gravity could... doesn't affect her when she's phasing, but, but then why does she fall? She doesn't have to, like, if she phases, she doesn't have to, like, just fall based on gravity, right? I don't know. She doesn't. No, it's not like she's like, I have to make sure that if I'm phasing through that wall, I have to be off the ground uh, lest I fall to the floor. Yeah. She can also concentrate on well, what can, part of her yeah, body phases she first. She doesn't have to phase the ground under her. She can just phase the wall in front of well, her. Well, she phases herself. Right. So I guess she makes... The she molecules of her hand cascading into herself if she's going through a wall, feet to head if she's going through the floor. Now remember, she can also like phase part of herself and put it in someone else yes. and kill them, and it doesn't like destroy or just her hurt hand. them. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, that's that's more vision. Vision does that. I think Kitty can do it too. Yeah, Kitty does all the time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's she's very just true. So trained. What would be funny her is if she did fall the impact and her. she fell and she like twists her ankle. And she's like, man, I'm so used to most of my interactions with mundane locations like a school being hard light holographic projections from the danger room. I have a lot to learn. Mm. Anyway, so school's over and everyone's hanging out. They're congregating outside, which is very high schoolish. School. Yeah. I feel very much for this. But for while, those of us who were walkers anyway, if you were on the true. bus, you were just straight on the bus. Yeah. Well, I didn't, I wasn't a walker, nor was I a busser. Oh, I, uh, how did you congregate I was then? a bummer. I used to oh, uh, hitch rides yes. or I'd walk into town and then walk from that town to another town and then bum a ride from a friend who was more adjacent to that town. <laughs> or be like, hey, I'm over at this friend's house. Come pick me up in a little while. Bingo. While Pete and Mary Jane are talking, Johnny Storm appears. She's like, that was terrible. I'm gonna talk to my regular friends, my mm -hmm. cool, normal friends, like Spider-Man. Right. And so he's there and Pete's like, oh God, it's Johnny, I like this guy. <laughs> Cause not only is Johnny kind of a braggart and mm. you know, a silly b-mock, but also <laughs> I don't need this kind of attention. You know, everyone knows Spider-Man goes to school. 25% of them think it's Peter Parker. Mm -hmm. And like, if Johnny Storm is coming out, <laughs> he's not gonna hang out, hang out with Peter yeah. Parker. Like, like, oh, how'd you meet? Right, oh yeah, how'd you meet Johnny Storm, noted celebrity and interdimensional, tra an interdimensional traveler slash superhero? <laughs> oh, you know, online. <laughs> so, uh, we have the same barber. <laughs> so they're chatting it up and Johnny has no regard. You know, Pete's like, can we please? And Johnny's like, ah, we'll be fine. We're just hanging out and razzling each other. <laughs> and then, uh, Johnny points at Kitty, who's with Kenny. He's like, hey, wait, I know you. I know you. You're from the X-Men. And she's like, oh my God, Johnny Storm. And she bails on Kenny, runs over, gives him a hug. Kenny's like, oh no. This is where my superhero villain origin story begins. <laughs> and so uh, they give each other a hug. And he's like, why are you holding a robot baby? Because of course, don't forget, there's that whole subplot of the baby story. The baby That's that they still get going from on. class. I did forget. Yeah, of course, because <laughs> it's because everyone wants to do that story, but no one wants to execute that story. Mm. And so Bendis does execute it with extreme prejudice in the next <laughs> issue. But for now, we're just reminding you. <laughs> I'm assuming he executes it here. It's it's destroyed in the next issue. But uh, Kitty and Peter were partnered up because that was like the big. You know, Kitty was revealed to be going to the school, so now they're awkwardly partnered up because they just broke up with each other to have to raise a baby together, ah, <laughs> fart. So they do that and Kitty is like, I'll take care of it. Cause like, I'm not in the X-Men, you're Spider-Man, it's fine. So Kitty's raising the robot baby of Spider-Man. <laughs> She's a single mom. So then Iceman shows up and they're like, uh, Peter's like, this is my life. <laughs> what is I'm, happening? I'm trying desperately not to let my secret identity be revealed. And yet the Human Torch is here, Kitty Pride X-Man. And now Iceman has literally used his ice uh, capades to get here and so isn't that problematic doesn't that leave just ice everywhere it, all over New York yes. and it should crumble and fall and yeah. hit like give yeah. people concussions I, I believe the idea is that it's very thin is it hollow because okay. if I think it's, it's not 
That's dangerous. Right. It's got to be hollow, though it never is drawn that way. But we, it has to be, because otherwise the city would be littered with ice, loop de loops. Yeah, blocks. Yeah, it would just be covered. You know, no. Yeah. Bird travel would be severely hindered. It's strange in the artwork where you have this trail of ice. It looks like the whole thing is just suspended in the air. It's yeah. Like held up by what? Well, just like it, it would just crash right, down as right. a big slot you know it's just yeah doesn't yeah. make a lot of sense no it would need like support beams and yeah. stuff like that yeah it i mean you just look at a 3d printed anything and you're like there's a lot of shit in there yeah you know you can't just make a can't big trail of ice. it's just it's a throwback to like when we saw that in the right. cartoons and stuff well, the, and it's always like a quick shot. It's like moving around, so you don't really think about what happens well, to no, all they, that ice. They show you, they always show you the trail, because they want you to, uh, to see it and know that Iceman was there. <laughs> but and also, appreciate it. Yeah, it's fun, but it doesn't make any sense. But then we've only gotten, but then again, we're only six pages in, and nothing makes sense. <laughs> so. Unless he's using the, the water molecules in the air to freeze them yeah. in place and making them hard enough that he can, like, balance himself on. Yeah. So that he can slide. It's not like I'm supporting myself. I'm kind of creating well, like right. He's loops. sliding yeah. on them. I yeah. think that's why they're loops. Yeah, his, so he can keep his forcing. position is not the problem to me because like instantaneously I could imagine yeah, you, no, you mean like a, but a, a, after he passes by it. Well, the second it's conjured, it should be falling. Yes. So like maybe it'll help him stay where he is in the air and mm -hmm. not fall, but it should be just be like collapsing continuously behind him. Yes, I agree. Or, or or evaporating, which I guess is what in my head like happened. Like it's only there for a second. I think and that's then it, the like, idea. You know, like you said, it's really thin and it just kind of fades away. But here we have this structure. Yeah. <laughs> like a mile long. I know. Doesn't really make any sense. No, I agree. Yeah. It, it's never vexed me, but mm. I certainly do appreciate the criticism. Because the other it's, thing, like is, it's never vexed me because I don't ask. <laughs> sometimes what I see is like this one. Yeah. Where it's like a little closer to the ground. Sometimes you see a continuous oh, pile. Yeah. yeah. It's like well, it doesn't collapse because it's a whole pile of ice, right. not just like one little, you know, thing. Yeah. yeah that one one's arch. also an arc, so you could imagine that that's held up because it's an arch. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that one I don't have. It's that one. No, that, it's, that it's, one's that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but look at all of that stuff. Yeah, in the back. yeah, that's true. I didn't notice that. Yeah. <laughs> That's worse. It's also easy to track. Yeah. You're like, oh, where'd you come from? Mm, right. Oh, there. I see the path. Yeah. So he's like, hey, Kitty, what's up? And she's like, hey, Judas, like you were complacent in my <laughs> expulsion from the Xavier school. And he's like, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If I was complacent, that just makes me like, what, Peter? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on. Come I didn't on. kiss you on the cheek to identify you or, <laughs> or to the authorities or anything. Right? Come on. Yeah. So, yeah, he's like, I'm sorry that that happened. I just wanted to check in on you and see how you were doing and let you know that, like, you're missed. Everyone misses you. And Pound she's it. like, no! <laughs> While she's giving him the cold shoulder, ironically, uh, he looks at Peter. He's like, hey, are you? No. <laughs> are you sure? Nope. Oh, right. But you, I know, you're the human torch, right? He's like, that is, that is correct. I you're like my opposite. Right. Hey, that's kind of neat. And he's like, hey, is that a blonde that I know? And he goes over to Liz because Human Torch had showed interest in her when he went to their school for 10 seconds. Mm. Oh, I thought Iceman did that. I'd be like, oh, you're already hitting on the wrong character. I know, exactly. Yeah. So Johnny goes over to Liz and he's like, hey, like, what's up? And she's like, oh, hey, uh, I had a real problem with people with powers. So <laughs> I like kind of blew you off. But, you know, he's like, listen, that's water under the bridge. Let's let's chat it up. You know, we're young. We're both blonde. Let's 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 make this happen. You know? Does he? Does she no longer have a problem with powers at this point? Uh, no. It's more like she has bigger things to worry about. Like uh, she's just like, oh, why am I so intensely sick for right. momentary periods at a time? Right. Ah, whatever. While Iceman and Kitty are trying to talk because Bendis doesn't have anything interesting to have them to say to each other, <laughs> we just see that, oh, campus security shows up as well. They're like, what's going on? What is all this commotion? Meanwhile, Kenny is like, what's all this ice? <laughs> right. <laughs> what am I going to do about this? Oh, God. They're in the bus path. We got to get these kids out of here. So, yeah, Lord knows what will happen to the school if the kids stay around for 10 extra minutes. <laughs> You'd think. Chaos. Uh, absolute chaos. It would be pandemonium. You know what happens? Drug deals. Yeah, right. And babies. You're all dealing drugs as far as I'm concerned. Right? All I know is it's after three, I've got no responsibility for you. Get off the property. Yeah. Well, no, but if no, I just no. leave I you here, I have responsibility until uh, yeah. you are off the property. That's right. So get away. So get off property. So Kenny's looking at this like, oh, man, like there's, there's Peter, there's Johnny, there's Iceman. Like I can never. And then Mary Jane and Peter are like, hey, man, don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. 
Like, she chose you, dude. It's cool. And Kenny looks at Peter like, I really want to talk to you about this, but I want to be cool. I want to be bros. So then Kitty elicits an apology from Iceman and also some, like, you know, concession, like, Kitty's hotter than Rogue. And uh, ultimately then she... Uh, accepts his apology and then takes a note from Wolverine that references maybe something that happened in Ultimate X-Men. Who cares? All we know is <laughs> it makes Kitty sad. And then uh, Johnny suggests that, that they should go to the beach. And I'm like, which beach? What? Rockaway? Rockaway Beach. I'm guessing. So they're like, let's go to the beach. And I'm guessing it's hot out. I don't know. Wait, you said they're in Midtown? Aren't they in Queens? Yeah, well, it's Midtown High. Oh. In Queens. Yeah. I never really thought about that Yeah, before. but it can't be Why Midtown Manhattan Midtown? High. No. Yeah, I guess it's Midtown Queens High. Yeah, what? Let's throw that away. <laughs> uh, so it's hot out despite everyone's winter wear, and uh, so they're going to go to the beach. That's what Johnny's suggestion is. And they're like, all right. And then Kitty goes to Kenny, and she's like, you come too. And he's like, okay. <laughs> and I love this moment because, you know, they're all, like, it's just a bunch of teenagers just chattering at each other. Like, all right, we're going to do this. And then Mary Jane goes, hey, it's a thing all of a sudden. And then we cut to them at the beach. And it's just all these people, like these, this, this gaggle of misfits who are all coincidentally gorgeous. <laughs> and they're all going to the beach and they're all just gonna hang out and have fun. And so all the boys are on the sand talking to each other about being superheroes. <laughs> and Kenny is there. And the girls yeah, are in the water. Yeah, he's like, he's there, but he's also like not hanging out with them talking about being superheroes. No, he's, he's like, I think he's on the phone. Hmm. He's probably talking to his, he's probably arguing with his parents about something. <laughs> but uh, Or he's doing drug deals! They were right! Oh, Kenny's on the level, he's cool. <laughs> so the girls are in the water and all the boys are talking and they're talking about like Nick Fury, where's Nick Fury, what's going on with like the world. This uh -huh. is all, like, hey, what are we all up to? What's our relationship to Nick Fury? Isn't he kind of a jerk? And the girls just go, hey! And they're like, what? We're in bathing suits <laughs> and we're frolicking in the water, <laughs> look at us! Literally, Kitty goes, the girls are here. And the boys just immediately run into the water. <laughs> like, oh, this is this is a feel good comic of the year. Mm -hmm. So then after the beach, obviously they stay on the beach and they have a beach they have a beach bonfire. What is it, the sixties? You can't do that. Yeah, you just can, immediately this is New York you City. will be absolutely not. Yeah. yeah. The cops will be there in a second. Like, what are you doing? I, I I've been to multiple beach bonfires in my day. Really? You know what it is? <laughs> Johnny Storm just lays down and flames well, yeah. on. That's the thing, it's like, boom, we got a fire. It took no effort, the cops, and, oh, they see it one? Iceman, oh, what fire? Everyone's paired up and they're all just like canoodling with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, even Liz is warmed up to Johnny, pun intended. And then suddenly, uh, some of the fire gets on Liz and she bursts into flames and becomes Firestar. She's like, boom, she's on fire. Oh. And everyone's like, whoa! And that's what it was. It was her mutant powers were kicking in. Right. She was manifesting. And that was what was making her feel sick. And so now she's Firestar and she immediately just starts flying around because like, you know, it's an X-Men mutant power. So it also equates, she has a healing factor now. You know, she's mm. got all the, all the accoutrements <laughs> that come with being a superhero. Oh, right. Kitty Pride has a healing factor. That's why when she landed on the ground, she went, oh, she's fine. Oh, yeah. She's like, yep. it did break my bones, but, but they, they just healed, healed right quickly. away. Yeah. I didn't, they didn't break. It was a mild sprain. Yeah, I had a mild sprain. <laughs> I was very lucky, and I'm young, so I'm plastic. So uh, they're flying around, and so Johnny goes up to meet her, and eventually... Uh, yeah, she, she can. he can show her how to, how to control flame. her firepower. Well, he's trying to, but she's freaking out because she doesn't think any of this is normal, and she right. hasn't read a comic book in her life. <laughs> so she, like, shoots fire at Johnny, and Johnny falls into the water, and then Iceman goes out to say to stop her and he manages to cool her off and then bring her over but of course she burned her clothes off so she's naked so they get her a towel and says so she's oh, covered she up. she doesn't have an outfit of unstable molecules Boom, like the Boom, exactly. Yeah. So then they, they, they pick up Johnny, they go does, and... She hits him with fire. Is it different, different fire? fire? Because she's, it's like mutant fire yeah. and he's like not mutant? Look, they're different color fire. Yeah, okay. I was going to say yeah. they're different colors. Exactly. Yeah. One's yeah. a mutant manifested fire, the other one is it's completely cosmic ray manifested cosmic fire. Ray manifested fire. Right. Yeah, that's totally different fire. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It has to be. Right. <laughs> so uh, Peter brings her in, you know, he's like holding her there because Liz and Peter and Mary Jane, coincidentally, uh, and Mary Jane, of course, uh, grew up together. Like mm -hmm. they're all from the same neighborhood. They all went to the same grade school, middle school, high school. So like, even though Liz was part of the brigade that made fun of Peter before he had powers, mm. uh, so was Mary Jane, really. Like they right. were all friends though. Like even though she was that, like in grade school, they all played together. Right. So it's like, it's, they have that kind of connection mm -hmm. where it's like, yeah, we don't really know who each other is right now, but we've 
but we've, we've known each other known since each other we were t- yeah. for 15 babies. years. I know like, who you were. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, they're all talking about how she might be a mutant. Uh, <laughs> might. Well, they're they're like. What other explanation? Do well, you I have? mean, we got Johnny Storm here. We got Peter Parker yeah, here. He we was got... hit by cosmic rays. I was bit by a radioactive spider. Yeah. Well, genetically Neither modified spider. Mutants. Oh, genetically modified. Yeah. Well, but the I guess mutants, she so could got... have been bit by something. Yeah, exactly. We have yeah. no idea, but right. I mean, it is. So right. maybe it was a but magical it's... bonfire, right? <laughs> so Johnny gets a call from the Fantastic Four. It's just a just a, an alert that's like. You got. You have to show up. We have to deal with something. We've right. detected a new mutant in the area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I know it's fine. It's cool. And also, what? <laughs> Iceman's like, what? What is? Why is Fantastic Four doing that? That's kind of our bag. Also, that's creepy. Yeah. So Johnny's like, look, I, I have to go, and he's like really sad because he's like, hey, this is a big moment. I've kind of been trying to make Liz my girlfriend here, mm. like, and now I've got to bail on this huge, impactful moment in her life. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like, but I have this important thing to do. So he so he flies away. Yeah, it's called being responsible and having, you know, yeah, powers. But it makes her feel bad. So she's like, well, that's the end of that. So well, if, Oh, yeah, he left because she's a mutant. Right. He's just like, yeah. no, oh, she's, no, the Fantastic Four. Oh, I got an alert. <laughs> you, went, you, went, you went across Iceman the entire day, man. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't make out with Iceman. Liz has a meltdown, lights up and flies away. And Iceman goes after her. And Kenny turns to Peter and he's like, you should probably go after her too. And he's like, why, why would I go after her? And he's like, dude, like, I know she doesn't know who you are, but like, she needs your insight. Like, she needs your level of expertise. And he's like, Kenny, I'm sorry, man, but I have no idea. And he's like, oh, dude, I've, she's known you for, since second grade. Like, it's, it supersedes all the bullshit about superpowers and secret identities. Like, come on. And he goes, okay, fine. So he turns around and he goes, boy! It sure would be nice if Spider-Man were in the area because if he were there, maybe he might have something to say to her that would help her through this difficult ordeal. And everyone's just looking at him like, what are you doing? And Peter's like, okay. So he runs off and Mary Jane looks at Kitty like, you bitch. Mm. You totally told him while you were making out or something. Yeah. She's like, I didn't, I swear. And he's like, she didn't. I figured it out. I'm just smart. I'm just cool. I got this. <laughs> So then uh, Iceman catches her. Yeah, that's her. what you would say if she, if she told you and tell, told you don't tell anybody that I told you. That is, I mean, that is what you would say. <laughs> that is Mary Jane from a few volumes ago. Mm. <laughs> so uh, Iceman catches up to her. He's like, hey, it's going to be fine. Like, look at you. Like, you're already flying. You're already can't, like, controlling your flame. Like, you're doing great. Like, point your head in the direction you want to fly. <laughs> this is one of those few moments where it's like, Bendis wants to get into the, into the nitty gritty about how flying works as superheroes. Like, no, point your head. Like, you, are, you fly based on the direction of your head. Like the top of your head? Like the, So you can't look where you're going? The way I think it's, <laughs> the way I interpret it is point your face. Ah, that your sound face. is good. Like yeah. your face needs to be going in the direction you want to fly. Right. And Which I'm like- also excellent advice for anyone that drives a car or rides a motorcycle. That's right. <laughs> look where you look want where to you're go. Look where you're going. <laughs> no, but look where you want to go. That's true. It's yeah. a thing with motorcycling really? about object uh, fixation, ah. where if you see an object like an obstruction yeah. and you fixate on it, mm-hmm. you will more inherently ride right towards it. it. Yeah. Interesting. So if you focus on an exit point, you're yeah. more likely to avoid something. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. There we go. Maybe, uh, maybe Bendis is a, is a biker. So Iceman like, hoses her down because she's like, I don't know how to turn it off. I kind of know how to turn it on, but that's it. And then Spider-Man shows up and he's like, hey, <laughs> you've just uh, you've just broken one of the first cardinal rules of being a superhero. Don't leave home naked. <laughs> so then she attacks him and he's like, ah! What? And she's like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, it's just kind of... Reflex, I hate heroes. I just... <laughs> yeah, Spider-Man is creepy. Uh, yeah, exactly. Right. So then they start t- chatting it up and we can see like... The and she listens, she's like, wait a minute, Peter? Right. <laughs> I Right away! I wish that were the case, but it's it, it's we need a big moment later in the story. Mm. So, uh, you know, we can also see like the carnage that Iceman has wrought mm. with his melting structures. So much. But as you can see, they ice. are melting they are immediately. Melting. Yeah, because yeah. a fire character is there, no, right? That's, that has yeah. to be it. No, it has to be because they are weak structures so that they can be broken at a moment's notice. Maybe they're strong structures and that's how they can stay up. It's not just regular ice, it's super strong okay. ice. So as long as it's an unbroken chain, no. it will just stay. Maybe there are triangular trellises inside to give it structure Extra and rigidity. rigidity. Here's the yeah. reality. They are fully frozen structures. They're mm. heavy. Yeah, they're solid. Yeah. They're solid. That's why they stay up. Yeah, I but, say they're thin but because they, have, they can't be. Yeah. The heavier it is, though, the more leverage it would have. Yes. It should just tip right over. Absolutely. <laughs> but it is one long, unbroken structure. Yeah. 
So Liz catches herself back on fire, and she kind of like floats above them, and they chat. And like, it's just a big, like, four-page sequence in which Iceman and Spider-Man talk her down, where Pete's like, this is a great moment for you because you get to find out what kind of person you actually are. Because, like, very rarely do people get these moments of great power to find out what they're going to do with it. Mm. And so you get to find that out yourself, and hopefully... You'll, you'll stop hating mutants! Right, well, he doesn't give a shit about that. Because, like, that's... It, it's all superficial. It's not mm. really that she hates mutants. It's that she's, like, projecting. Right. But, uh, yeah, he's like, this is this is a good moment for you. Maybe try not to rob banks with it. You know? Like, well, we'll here's what we're going to do. We should go talk to Reed Richards. He'll figure it out. Because he hasn't turned into an evil, Maybe. megalomaniacal villain called the Maker yet. So, uh, that'll be cool. He's just going to. He's just going to definitely do that. Yeah, but not him. here. No, not here. And so, uh, they're talking about, like talking to her mom, because her mom is like also where she gets her anti-mutant hysteria from, mm. uh, but uh, also, you know, raised her as a single mom. And uh, so, uh, ultimately they do end up reaching her when they're talking about like, how she's gonna have to balance her personal life with her life now as a fire girl. Mm -hmm. And she's like, why would I ever go back to school oh. when I could do this? <laughs> and just immediately starts flying around. And so, uh, okay. like, fair point. <laughs> yeah. So Pete talks to her about, like, being a mutant and how, you know, she's like, well, you're not a mutant, are you? And he's like, no, but I dated a mutant. And she's like, oh, you really did? You dated Kitty? Like, okay, so do you know Peter Parker? And he's like, nah. And then Magneto shows up. Oh, shit. And Magneto's like, all right. So I rarely get to beat Chuck <laughs> to these kind of interactions. Uh, uh. Come with me. I could use a fire person. I have a guy whose superpower is being really fat. So I could really <laughs> use a couple of power players. He never says this, but like right. you know, it's it's implicit. What's his pitch? His pitch is that you know, that like you're destined for greatness, that you're 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 better than other people, right. and that I know your father, and that's where you get your mutant powers from. Oh. And he desperately wants to meet you. Oh. Oh shit. What? Yeah. The big secret about like who Liz Allen's father is. Maybe it's Magneto. <gasps> it's not. It's not. So Iceman tries to attack Magneto, which of course fails immediately. Based on what? Because he's Magneto. It's Magneto. Right, he's a bad guy. He's he hasn't bad committed guy. any he's the crimes. Of the X Men. He's committed crimes before. It doesn't oh, mean that he I hasn't see. before. He's trying to arrest him. Yeah, well, he's trying to. Like, I think he's trying to beat him. You know, just beat him up. Just defeat him. Yeah, just defeat him. You know. This is what we do. This is the, yeah. He didn't. He didn't do it to you. He didn't attack you. That's that. That was his response to them. You know? Yeah. Uh, so. You drew first blood. <laughs> no, he doesn't do that. He's 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 like a Bendis <laughs> supervillain. So he's like. Uh, please calm down while I rationally explain to you my manifesto, which <laughs> seems really reasonable until you get to the big moment where I say something incredibly messed up. Right. And also <laughs> still, and, and we might only do this the entire issue and never throw a single punch. Well, here's the thing. Right. I'm going to be very rational because I'm trying to win the favor of someone who just became a yeah. mutant. You guys are and freaking show them out. My yeah. side. Yeah. You guys are the ones who are losing you're your shit. Nuts. All I'm saying is I can show it's her the world. Can I webbing my face and throwing ice at me? Yeah, like, come on. That's pretty extreme. Also, it could kill you in like a second. Uh, yes. <laughs> in fact, I probably will because I'm Magneto in the 1610 universe, so Ultimatum hasn't happened yet, mm. you know, where I reverse the poles and cause horrible tidal waves and kill right. millions of people. Uh, but yeah. But um, I will. But I will do that. And I'm totally well, I should have no of problem it. murdering two teenagers. Right. So he's like, come with me and I will introduce you to your dad. And so, uh, oh, also, he incap so Magneto incapacitates Iceman and Spider Man while he like has a private moment with Liz. He's like, and he's please, just like, we're talking. Exactly, the mutants are talking. <laughs> I know you are one, but uh, I'll make an exception because you're a jerk. <laughs> so he's trying to win her over, and he's like, "I know your dad. He's a member of my Brotherhood. He wants to meet you. I'll introduce you, and you can join our family." And blah blah blah. And she's like, "Yeah." And so she flies away, and she goes home. <laughs> she's like, "It's not the fat one, is it?" <laughs> please don't let it be the fat one. Could it be? I, the one? Could I don't want that visual of Blob and, <laughs> and my, my mom, mom. porking. Could, could it be the blue one who turns in, who's a girl, but maybe she like grew a dick, you know, when she transforms? <laughs> I, that is, okay, we're, okay, we're here's all, a we're, question. We're dangerously close to that, by the way, because in the main 616 universe, they are starting, I think they're weaving in the new continuity because of course like Mystique and Destiny, both of whom are women, are married. And the implication was that Mystique is Nightcrawler's mom. But what if? She's his dad <laughs> because she made right. a dick. Well, 
Is it made a dick or is it impersonated somebody? Can she just make whatever she wants? She can make whatever she wants, but like she doesn't have their genetic material right, stored she, inside of them. No, but she well, has maybe her she does. genetic material. Exactly. Yeah. But like she but can't she, conjure sperm. Maybe she can. Make but it naturally. Just, but yeah. But, I, does her internal anatomy change when she changes into somebody else? So it's like, yeah, very possible because it's all made up in any way. Right. So why See, not? I assumed it was all. Uh, a visage. Yes, yes. It's right. it's it's an it's like approximation. Her, her putty exterior. Yes. Like I can pretend to be the thing. Right. But if you stab me, I'm not Rocky. Well, yeah. It was like I can make a can dick, but Rocky? it's more like a dildo. Like it's not. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Right. But I think the implication will be that she is actually Nightcrawler's mom dad. Mm. In any case, <laughs> just to save us some time, Mystique is not Liz Allen's dad. Ah. The 6210 universe. Right. So anyway, uh, she goes to her mom's house, and her mom like comes out in her night, ro you know, in her nightgown. She's like, "Ah, what's going on?" <laughs> and so they start like talking to each other. She's like, "I'm a mutant." She's like, "Oh no, my worst nightmare." Yes, and she's like, "Who's my dad?" And she's like, oh, "Okay," and she goes, oh. "You." And Magneto shows up. And she's like, "Him?" And then she's like, "No." No. They're, no, not, not him, him. Just no, you, just, him. He's no, part you're of it, here. though. Yeah, exactly. She's like, no, he's the man who came here and took your father away from this family. And that's why I hate mutants. Yes. Because I banged one, and then another one came in and indoctrinated him and right. then took him away from me, and I had to, like, raise you by myself, and I had no alimony payments. Fair. I don't know if you know this, but the Brotherhood of Mutants. Yeah. Or the Brotherhood of Mutants? Yeah, uh, well. Whatever they are. I'm sure they don't call them, well, no, Magneto did call themselves the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, but yeah. I, I think that's more honorary <laughs> entitled than yeah. it is self. The Brotherhood of Evil Mutants doesn't have like a union rep. No. And like dues where they can pay health insurance. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hell no. Yeah. There's no wages to garnish. Precisely. <laughs> Magneto just says a bunch of bullshit that Bendis just fills his mouth with. And uh, mm. so, you know. We're I'm just, sorry, she's on fire and she's holding a blanket. Is it asbestos? Uh, I, I think that it's more like she's able to control it. You know, like, because it is fake mutant fire. You know, maybe it's just like... <laughs> but it, but it, it can't burn all things, clothes off. Yeah. But I, she's restraining it. I think it's because we want her to not be naked and awkwardly hide her behind plants and things right. while the rest of this sequence ha happens. Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't <laughs> think about it. It's cool looking. She, only, she did it for like a second. She, she only does it for like a only that eye. one panel and then she's back. Yeah, and there's a little bit of flame left over, so maybe it ignited like a little bit. Yeah, I think so. Because her mom is screaming at her like, you gotta run, just run away from him. And she maybe goes, it's a wet blanket. Oh. <laughs> well, there's there's plenty of those, those here. in here. <laughs> so what? her mom is like, run away. And Liz goes, shut up, you liar. Oh. And she's like really mad at her mom and I don't think she ever forgives her. But anyway, oh. uh, then the X-Men and Spider-Man shows up and he's like, hey, just for clarification purposes, that's the bad mutant. And these are the good ones, <laughs> except for Wolverine, who was a psychopathic murderer. <laughs> so then, uh, you know, the X Men appear, and Wolverine, you know, oh, so uh, you know, obviously this is the this is the point in the comic book where there would be an awesome fight between Spider Man and the X Men versus Magneto. But instead, they all talk to each other because it's the Bendis comic book. Right. And so also Wolverine's there, so you know, spitting Blade Top of Doom, powered by Magneto. That's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. I'm just gonna start spinning Wolverine at all of you until you all die. <laughs> That would be amazing. That's a great move. So, you know, everyone's just kind of like, hey, like Magneto is convincing, but he's a liar and he's a murderer. And so no, and don't worry about Wolverine. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, Magneto doesn't argue with any of that. You know, he's like, well, I'm fighting a war. People die in war and, you know, whatever. Right. She's like, well, that sounds like a crazy person thing to say. <laughs> and he's just like, listen, like, I can, I can vouch. Magneto is a bad guy. And uh, so, you know, she's like, But he doesn't know about my dad. Right, but she doesn't know about my dad. But she's like, so, you know, Mom, why didn't you tell me anything? And her mom's just on the ground like, why? <laughs> she's oh, like, there's just so many mutants, I can't. No, no, no. Is that <laughs> why she hates mutants? <laughs> yes, it's because she's mad that, like, a mutant knocked her up and then bailed to, like, be in his creepy to, mutant pelt. To be an evil mutant. <laughs> to be an evil, to be to join a group that's just evil in the title. And that's not a job. <laughs> no, it. it doesn't pay anything. <laughs> so she's just, she's just sad. And, and it's, yeah. it's also really sad because, like, I get the mom. Because like the mom like basically just lied about her dad yeah. the entire time. Yeah, but what's she gonna say? Yeah, because what are you like, gonna say? Well, here's the thing: it's a mutant. Maybe it won't be passed on. Right. So like, there's I'll always be a chance with mutants. Yes, exactly. I'll make it so that you don't even like go near them. So there's no chance. I don't want you to get like, mixed up with those mutants. Because I can't yes. lose you too. Yeah, that's right. right. I mean, she's yeah. very sad, but like, yeah. So she flies off, and then they're like, "All right, well, she clearly made her choice, Magneto. She's not leaving with you." And he's like, "Well, she will." She doesn't, by the way, spoilers. But uh, yeah. so then he leaves, and they're all just like, yeah, there he goes. Yeah, you better run. Yeah. So I don't understand. When it was just Iceman, he just started fighting him. And now there's like, there's uh, like there's 10, like of, 10 them, of them, and they're just like, 
Well, you can go. I have to assume that Jean Grey just uses her psychic powers to make everybody else chill out and not not do it. Uh, right. Here's a question. Especially Wolverine. Uh, Cyclops has uh, the optic blast thing. Yes. Kinetic things. Um, what are in his pouches? Especially his chest pouches. Oh, you know, those are vestigial. Like, you know, he has like... <laughs> snacks, med snacks. kitchen stuff. I assume like, you know, trail mix. Yeah, you can, I mean, look at all the pouches. You know? or like, That's my um, point. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah it's, it's healing ointments and... True, yeah, um, balms. Yeah. Some kind, yeah. What does he need? His keys? An extra set of playing cards for uh, you know, like, uh, for Gambit. Reconnaissance movement? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, Gambit's He's not got a backup coat. Gambit. <laughs> He's got plenty of cards. Gambit's not on the team. So uh, she goes, uh, that is to say, Liz goes to Mary Jane's house, and she's just like, hey, I just... I just need to like sit and talk to a normal person. Yeah, I just need to talk to someone who doesn't have friggin' power. Or isn't like hey. the, or isn't a liar? <laughs> right. Uh, about that normal person thing. <laughs> oh, I yeah. get upset. So then Spider-Man shows up and he's like, hey, and she's like, ah! And he's like, listen. Like, all right. I followed you. I, 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 I go here a lot. <laughs> to Mary Jane's apartment. Or to, to Mary Jane's backyard. Also, I didn't realize you were gonna be here. I was just coming to see Mary Jane. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh this is this is a bonus. Oh my god, this is awkward. Naked I'm, lady. I didn't follow you, I swear. Yeah, naked peer and Mary Jane. Ladies, shall we? Uh, so uh, he he basically is like, all right, look, like this will help. Maybe this will help you calm me down, but more importantly, like it'll show you that like you can trust me. So he takes off his mask and he shows her he's Peter, mm -hmm. and she's like, wow, and he's like, and you can't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. Like, please, <laughs> please, I really by, by taking off my mask. I'm, I'm if you tell anyone, I'll kill you. Right, exactly. But That's I how didn't it works. agree to not tell anybody. Well, you I'm, just took off your mask. I'm, ask, I'm show as a gesture of faith to help calm you down and show you that like one can have. Like a dual life, and you know, be responsible with their powers. Mm, really, because you you're miserable because like I'm... all the time. You're right. very grumpy. Uh, I am not grumpy. I, I'm I, a teenager. Yeah, listen, I have a right to be grumpy. <laughs> I'm hormonally dispositioned to be grumpy. So you know, uh, Iceman shows back up, but he he's just, like, "Hey, I'm here too." Me She's too. Like, I got, I just left everybody. Yeah, like, but, but we need a scene where Iceman, Firestar, and Spider-Man are all in the same scene together without Human Torch or any right, other extra characters. Right. So like Mary they form, Jane, they're oh, wait, amazing. she's still here. She has the powers. She, she oh, randomly cow. sometimes can turn into a beast monster, but like even then, it's, power. it's by accident, and it's, it shouldn't do anything with it. <laughs> she's not conscious when it's happening. And it's not happening ever. It happens like twice. Anyway, so Iceman basically says, like, go to the, come with me to the Xavier Institute. So he's like, okay. So then uh, Liz In leaves. In the very least, we can get you some clothes. Bingo. That won't burn <laughs> up that's, when that's, you. He says, Torture. and we'll get you a uniform that won't burn off. And she's, so, you know. She's like, I do need that. That is a prerequisite for yeah, doing anything. Yeah, you know what? Anything. I'll go for that, yeah. and then we'll and maybe like you know for some food, but like yeah, otherwise free stuff. Right. So meanwhile, Johnny Storm shows up a day later, be like, "Hey, I got you that suit that oh, oh, oh damn it! It's it a had a five, five on it and everything. It's like I gotta throw it all of them now. <laughs> I had them made up. <laughs> I gotta call the marketing guy. <laughs> now, no X nay on the IFA. <laughs> so you know, uh, Liz throws in a, a couple of compliments to Pete. You know about how amazing he is because he's like you know he's patient and caring and understanding and how he manages to do these two lives and he right, she's like I and I wouldn't do this oh he does yeah he's like yeah. oh yeah yeah no. <laughs> but yeah. he's he's joking aren't you sorry you said all those horrible things about mutants before right he, no that never comes up again no. everyone just assumes <laughs> everyone knows when you're projecting nobody needs to rub her face in it she is a mutant okay she's not one of those self-hating mutants once she found out she was one all bets are off right. all, all the racism stuff is like ridiculous. oh I was wrong yeah. oh they're just like me yeah derp so uh, you know, he throws a great power, great responsibility at her, and she's like, that's lame. Like, you're a tool, and then flies away. <laughs> and so Pete and Mary Jane's left in her backyard. She's like, wow, that was eventful. So what do you want to do now? He's like, you, you want to make out? <laughs> she's like, no. Plus, your costume smells. And he's like, okay, fine. All right. And he's like, listen, I was just fighting an evil mutant. She goes, we'll make out with him. He's like, maybe I will make out with him. <laughs> so then we cut to the Savage Land years ago. Gotta oh. go back. Let's go back. To when... Uh, Magneto was setting up his base of operations in the Savage Land and uh, recruited the Blob. And the Blob is explaining what? to him that... Uh, is it the Blob? When he was at the circus, he knocked up this chick at the circus and, uh, you know, found out that, uh, yeah, his, his boys can swim. And so Magneto's like, well, uh, I, I couldn't care less about that and I'm not going to help you. And he's like, but what it's if... It's got nothing to do with me. Right, but what if they're a mutant? And he's like, if, if they're a mutant, then they are allowed to be here and I will go get them. Yeah. So we cut back to school, it's days later, and uh, we're doing the uh, the resolution to the baby project. Right, right, how'd they do? We're getting the readings from these robot babies. Yes, yeah, so they're like, Here, give your presentation. So Kitty's like, Peter, uh, please present our baby. 
So he takes this like oh. bundle. I and thought he just, she had the baby. Yeah, no. No, she, in the previous issue, she shoves it in his hands when uh. like things don't work out. And so uh, Peter dumps the, the, the charred remains of the doll onto the table. And he's like, and she's like, he murdered our baby. <laughs> and he's like, I, okay, I can explain this. <laughs> she's just like, uh, that was worth like $500. Yeah, you have to replace that. So, how did you do that? How did you do that? It's bad enough if the baby says you didn't take care of it, yeah. but I give you a D. Yeah, but you destroyed it. So it's a F and a bill. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Pete Like an Mary F triple minus. Yeah, exactly. So Pete uh, and Mary Jane are chatting it up when Kitty goes like, hey, um, I just heard that like your mutant hating friend just got accepted in the goddamned Xavier school. Wait. And they're like, yeah, well, she's going to need some training and help. And she's like, she hated mutants. And I called Professor X a jerk. <laughs> and I got expelled? Uh, you called him a jerk when you were already a mutant. Right. And knew it. Yeah. She hated mutants when she had a fear for them right. and didn't know she was one. Yeah, she yeah. can. she's open to change. And you you always not. think that Professor yeah. X is a mutant. Well, you were enrolled and subject to the rules of the school, which you broke. Yes. She was not enrolled. Listen, Didn't have any rules Kitty, to break. Well, here's when, the other thing. When, you are, when, when you're ready for the school, Professor X will let you back in because he's always monitoring you. <laughs> you you've always thought he was a jerk. Yeah, he knows he that. he accepted that. Right. But when you said it out loud... You crossed a line. It's in the bylaws. <laughs> Don't call out Professor X in public. <laughs> Everyone knows Everyone that. knows that, and it's on your handbook. You're lucky you still remember things. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky the X Men showed he up. He let you off easy. He really did, because this one's a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> so then a counselor comes in and like, hey, so like uh, another classmate. Another one of your friends you'll never see again. Yep, you got another friend that you'll never see again. This one didn't die though. This one got superpowers and flew away. So I'm surprised at how many times I have to do this this year. Right? Does anyone want to talk about it? And one of the kids feelings of jealousy or resentment. Right? And like, what are these kids like? I think we should have the day off. And someone's like, yes, I agree. And she's like, well, that's not gonna happen. <gasps> yep, that's well, I very feel real. Very, uh, Emotional like, and vulnerable dude, right now? I remember that vividly happening. There was uh, some, some hullabaloo at my school uh, with, a, with a teacher. We won't get into the specifics of it, but mm. let's just say a counselor was brought in. And they were like, uh, they interrupt the Spanish class, which was great, because thank you. <laughs> and uh, they were like, excuse me, uh, you know, there's this counselor, this is Dr. So-and-so. Uh, she's here to just to see if you guys feel anything. And by the way, like, because uh, this was all like happening behind closed doors. Like, you know, two thirds of the classroom didn't even know something went down. Mm -hmm. So then it's like, oh, what? Mr. So and so? <laughs> what? Oh, what? Yeah. Uh, keep that one to yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's like the DARE program being like, so here's all the names of drugs, here's what they look like, and here's where they come from. Yeah. Don't do any of them. <laughs> well, what do they call them on the street, though? Oh, oh well, let me give you the list. <laughs> <laughs> what are the street prices currently? <laughs> oh, well, I well, know. I got that. those here right here, yeah. Don't lose control of the situation oh, no. a little bit here. You know what? I'm going to fire my gun. <laughs> so uh, the counselor's going on and on about this, and she's, like, going around the room, and she's like, hey. And, like, my friend and I could not care less about, like, who that was mm -hmm. and what happened. Right. And uh, there were kids who were, like, crying. Oh, my God. And, and, and I was like, hey, we're going to have to go back to class if we don't, like, say something. So... <laughs> Just like, so I remember being like, I, I just feel really betrayed. And like, I feel like, you know, maybe like we need some distance from the school for a couple of days. And <laughs> Tim, Tim's like, yeah. yeah I Absolutely. Just, I, definitely like, need some I just, I feel, I feel really violent. Like, I don't know who to trust. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And he's like, I don't know if I could ever trust the school ever again. And they're like, oh, wow, that's really that. That's a fair point. And oh. I'm like, yeah. And the teacher's like, all right. <laughs> It's like, no, they're no, playing those you. Those two don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Not them. Not them, Not no. them. Their, their feelings are invalid. <laughs> so Pete, like, goes to the Daily Bugle. This is all flashback. Mm. This is all to lead up to the destruction of the baby. Okay. Oh, jo right. Jonah gets into an argument with Betty Brant because, like, 16 volumes ago, she hooked up with the with Craven the Hunter. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, then uh, Omega Red shows up because in, a, in, in oh. one story, Omega Red attacked... And J. Jonah Jameson, I guess, either wrote or greenlit an article about how Omega Red sucks. And so Omega, is Omega Red- Is Omega Red a vampire? He's just white. The, the, the real Omega Red is also like 
quite. Right, but it's got weird elf pointy ears, like Dracula. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. It's 1610 Omega Red. Nobody has any they plans can, for this like, character. I, I don't know what he is. He looks weird. Yeah, he's, look. uh, he's goblin based. Right, yeah, whatever. He's got goblin powers. Doesn't even matter. Here's, here's Omega Red. He looks like Red. Bloodshot. Yeah, he does look like Bloodshot. Uh oh. He looks like Vampire Bloodshot. Or does Bloodshot look like him? No. No, he looks like Bloodshot. Oh, Bloodshot okay. predates, predates uh, Omega Red. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, he's like there to attack J. Jonah Jameson, and Jameson's like, hey man, listen, like, full disclosure, I have no idea who you are. <laughs> I just want to make sure I get your name spelled right for the headline. He's literally just like, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't even remember green lighting an article about you. Like, I, I'm sorry. I, for you, the How day I wrote a negative upset? article about you was the worst day of your life. For me, it was Tuesday. <laughs> That's right, Bison. <laughs> So he's just thrown around the office and he's just like, I'm sorry. And he's just, and he's like, oh, I work for the Roxxone Corporation and blah, 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 blah. You know. Yeah. How could you not remember? You had very specific yeah. criticisms about me. Yeah. And he's just like, what? <laughs> so then Spider-Man shows up. He smashes through the window. It gives you a Peter like ran outside and then put on the Spider-Man costume and <laughs> came around the back. And then he's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this must be so much easier for Superman. Yeah. And he, yeah. He, he's just, you know, he fights Omega Red. And of course, this is where the baby is destroyed. Right, in uh, the fight. But the whole damn, like, office is sh just, just wrecked in this big fight with Omega Red. I believe the last time that Pete beat Omega Red, he, like, hits him in the head with a giant cement truck or something. Just And so, similarly... So he kills him. Uh, I mean, he should, but he's like, this guy can take the punishment, it's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, JJ takes all the pictures himself, and uh, yeah. ultimately... Do you they know, come out terrible? Because that'd be amazing. I would love that, but so they where's never... Where's Parker? Yeah, we ne we if never, he comes back, he's fired. We never get that. That's that's old J.J. Yeah. Jameson. This is Jameson no. who's like, no, Peter works on the website. Oh, yeah, that's right. Also, uh, Jameson is, and Peter's mom, or no, uh, Aunt May, mm -hmm. also like hashed out because she yelled and like... Oh, that's right. Yes. Gave yeah. Him yeah, Aunt May gave Jameson the business. Yeah. Uh, so He's yeah, like, I like her. Yeah. You're okay. You're okay. You, you get a, a firecracker. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Pete crushes his head with like a giant uh, vending machine. Oh. Snack on this. <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> no, Omega Red just goes, not again. He goes, yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, so then Jameson accuses them both of working together and destroying his office on purpose. And, uh, you know, Spider-Man sure. webs him up and he's just like, yep, whatever. Eat it, jackass. Yeah, whatever you got to tell yourself. So he's like, yeah, so anyway, uh, I was working at the Daily Bugle. A supervillain attack destroyed my office. There's an article about it. Here's the photos. Here's my ID. I work at the Daily Bugle. Please help me. And the, uh, the teacher gives him a grade that I can't even believe. She says that they both get a B minus. And I'm like, a B minus. There's no data. There's no paper. There's no, <laughs> no records. Evidence. Yeah. It's just that the it's just all they have is a destroyed piece of school property. So I guess you can't really recover the information no, from it. No, I, they could it's argue destroyed. like, yeah, no, there was, it was there was internal data and it was destroyed. You can't you can't grade me fairly. Yeah, I would say there's but, no solution other than like makeup no, assignment. Make like, up you assignment. You gotta do you it. You gotta again. write a paper about responsibility. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, or, or something. You have to or do a research here's another paper. baby, like, do it again. No, there's no way. I'm not doing, um, no. <laughs> no. Trust me. <laughs> I have a curriculum no to get through. This session gotta, is over. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to wait for you to catch up to where we are in, like, two months. Forget it. Also, when did the baby get destroyed? Was it the day before this? Yeah. Okay, because otherwise... It was like, it was destroyed six months ago. And it's like, well, why didn't you come why to me? Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> you know, it was destroyed yesterday or this morning, so... You got okay. so close. Yeah. That's yeah, so and we almost made it to getting a D. I mean, it because can't be. there's no way that baby wasn't just left crying in, <laughs> like, you know, in the closet in Kitty's house. It has to at least have been the day before because then you have the newspaper. That's right, the newspaper. That's right. So it, was yeah, the, yeah. It, was, it was the day before. Let's do that. So, uh, Pete's upset because he's never had a B minus before. <laughs> he's one of those people. Yeah. And, uh, and she's like, it could be worse. And he's like, all right. So then uh, we begin immediate res. Peter Parker, Spider Man, has been unmasked and he's chained up in a warehouse, and Shocker has defeated him, and he is what? screaming in his face because Shocker, of course, has been a butt monkey in this series since the beginning. Yeah. Uh, Herman has been uh, pantsed by Spider Man on more than like five occasions, uh, and now Shocker has finally gotten one over on Spider Man. So he's either snapped. Or wouldn't it be great if it was somebody different? It's not. Like Shocker paid someone yeah. to capture and beat up Spider-Man and say that they were the Shocker yeah. when they did it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is more about like millennial rage. That's what this book is kind of about now. Oh. You know, oh. about people who are of a certain like generation who 
were told they could do anything and end up getting effed over by corporate America. Mm. That's what this issue is all about. I see. So this next issue, uh, Shocker has strung up Spider-Man and taken off his mask and he's just screaming at him because he's just a- So now he knows who he is. He doesn't because he's oh. like, you're a white kid. Yeah, I don't know what that means. What is yes. that? Yes, yeah. like it's if you run across someone on the street, like, yeah. hey- Oh, I it's him, know. there he is, oh, oh, what's your face? name? <laughs> right. Who are you? I don't know, eat yeah. shit. I guess, oh, yeah, fair enough. I guess I was hoping you were famous. I don't, I don't know. I right. don't know what I thought would happen. I don't know what I thought. Well, no, it's more like- <laughs> I know who Johnny Storm is. <laughs> I, I'm gonna embarrass you. Like I've taken off your mask right. and now like, if I ever see you, I will know who you are. Yeah. I mean, like, it's the age of cell phones. Oh, I've taken off your mask. Click. Click. He doesn't do that. Hmm. I, I don't know why. for me. It's weird. Uh, so yeah, uh, of course, Herman's the butt monkey of the series. He's been made fun of a million times. So it's like, let's do justice for Shocker. Right. This is what you get. Now you get your comeuppance, Pete. Right, for making fun of me. Yeah. And it's like the idea here being that like Herman, like he went to MIT, he invented these special sh shocker machines. They create vibrations right. that- Which for a normal person, that'd be really impressive. It, it, and it should be. And he did work for like Roxxon. Of course, Roxxon is like the big evil corporation that represents every other evil corporation in real America. Right. Uh, but you know they're you know they're they're science based, they're tech based, they're a pharmaceutical company. They 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 make weapons, they make super soldiers, they make it they make all. Everything, yeah. They make everything. They make everything, and they they they, they just... make that doll that got destroyed. In the yeah, they even yeah the Roxxon baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're like no company that ever existed. Right. Well, they're Monsanto. I guess, except Monsanto doesn't make like weapons. No, I mean, as far sure. as you know. <laughs> That's, and that's the implication of Roxxon, where it's like, yeah, no, Roxxon doesn't put their name on the gun. Right. I was gonna what say they're they like Raytheon, it? but they're not, because Raytheon doesn't make like chemicals. No, exactly, like, it's but like, it's like, it, it's more like if there was one company that owned all of those companies. Right. And there kind of is, but anyway, <laughs> so, uh, you know, the idea here is that, oh no, how did this happen? Well, let's go back, let's go back. Right. So uh, Mary Jane is trying to become like a news reporter. So they're doing this report for school. Uh, she can't do it because she's, you know, two in her own head. Uh, you know, she says the, you know, she's, she replaces the letters of the first two, you know, she's like very main Jotson, you know, like she moves, <laughs> moves all the letters around. She forgets how to say her own name. It's something that you do when you are not used to being filmed or mm. are trying to be on film uh, and you don't, and you aren't used to it. It's actually pretty accurate. I'm like, this is fair. And Pete's doing the, the recordings. And then all of a sudden, you know, oh no, trouble strikes, so he's gotta be Spider-Man. And, uh, you know, Shocker is robbing a bank. And so he's like, well, this'll be a minute. <laughs> so uh, she's just like, yeah, who is that? He's like, that's Shocker. He's the biggest loser in Loserville. Oh. I have, Shocker heard it. those words. Yeah, I have to pound him once a week. Shoot, it'll be great for your GPA. So uh, she does, she films like everything and he swings in, he beats up Herman and then suddenly Herman blasts him and it's stronger than it used to be. And like essentially Herman gets one and over on Spider- Like he gets one right. over on spider -Man. Eventually he gets a hit in. Like spider the, really, uh, the reality is Spider-Man gets too cocky. Yeah. He's just too comfortable beating Shocker. Yeah. And he, so he gets sloppy. Yeah. And he's just like, Okay, I did it. F all of you. That was funny, right? <laughs> so he blasts him and Quit he- Quit me in the nuts. Yeah, so he's just blasting Spider-Man. He grabs me, throws him in the van, and he leaves. And Mary Jane's just like- <laughs> Like, oh, no. not only did I film Spider-Man being captured, but I know who that is. Yeah. <laughs> what am I gonna do about this? So- uh, Who do you call? Anyone, I guess? Spider-Man and his amazing friends! The oh, amazing I, friends you well, need! Well, no, Firestar is the X-Men, she's not gonna be useful. Mm. Uh, Iceman, I don't know that guy. <laughs> I guess I'll have to call Kitty? Yeah. So yeah, that's the idea. Yeah. So Shocker's like yelling at Spider-Man, you know, he's like, I, I can't believe how much of my life you have wasted and you're a child. Like, you're just some stupid punk teenager. And you're the, like, you're responsible for so much of the misery of my life. <laughs> oh my God. You're every kid I fight against when I'm playing uh, Call of Duty. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, so you're- How are you headed shot at me every fucking time? <laughs> yeah, you're nutsuck69, what the crap? <laughs> so, uh, so the cops are uh, on the scene, you know, cleaning up. It's very rare we see like a post Spider-Man fight where everyone's just like, there's crowds, people watching. There's like e EMS and like firefighters and stuff. And everyone's just like looking at it. Meanwhile, Mary Jane calls Kitty Pride. And she's like, hey, listen, I gotta talk to you. And so Kitty meets up with Mary Jane. She shows Kitty the footage and she's like, listen, we gotta, and she's like, well, just call the police. And she's like, I can't because like, I'll have to, t how do I know him? 
Like, what if they go there and he's already like killed or he's unmasked? Like, they'll they'll need to know who Spider Man is. Like, they, no, they're not friends of ours. What was she gonna tell the police? What does she know that they wouldn't already know? Well, it's well, I saw like the the, the van. I have the license plate. I got oh. this guy. Nobody else got the license plate number. No, it was I just, guess because she has it on film. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, she recorded it. But right. I don't understand. She was legitimately just recording. Yeah. what was happening. Right, it's true. I guess she feels like she'd have to explain that, like, well, I was with my boyfriend. Yeah, and then, where's like, he? And where's what's he his now? statement? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, too, it's too messy. Yeah, okay. So we go to the police station uh, where Kitty shows up and she's like, hey, cop who never appeared in this book before, <laughs> we have a history, you're sympathetic to mutants, uh, so I'm here, but I need you to now be sympathetic to Spider-Man because <laughs> Spider-Man's in trouble and I need you to do this police work to find him and also promise you won't, like, take off his mask or tell anybody who he is. And he's like, what? He's like, that's a lot no, of things. that is insane. <laughs> She's like, listen, just l let me show you this oh, tape. Maybe you can extrapolate something from it and then give me the information and I'll do it. And he's like, no, no. you're here now. Now it's a police matter. Yeah, give I me the tape and I will do what I do as a policeman <laughs> and you're out of this now because you're a child. Right, it's gonna be paperwork. Yeah. There's gonna be multiple police officers involved. Exactly. It's gonna be a whole thing. Like, I have a procedure that I have to follow. that's the only thing well, I also, can do. Now right. that you brought me information of a crime, I can't ignore it. That's true. Yep. And I can't let you as a just an ordinary citizen get involved. Yeah. What did you think was going to happen? Right, so uh, Kitty does the thing she does every time that anyone tells her not to get involved because she'll get hurt. She phases through his chest and goes, I can't get hurt. I can never be hurt in my entire life. And I'm like, that's not true at all. Fuck no it. one would believe that. That would especially not work on like a police captain. But anyway. Right. Also, uh, how invasive. <laughs> I know, I don't care for that. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> don't face through me ever again. Whoop, whoop, yep. Whoop, whoop, I just did it like five times. Yeah, you can't stop me. <laughs> yep, arrest me, I dare you. Shoot me. Right, please. It's like, I know, these cuffs. Oh, I, I know who, you all, who you are. Like, I'll just put out an APB for you. Like, now okay. I'll just, you'll and meet they'll, And they'll try to arrest me and fail right. as so, well. Yeah, and they'll arrest your mom and your <laughs> life is over. Like, you'll never be able to go anywhere without police attacking you. I don't care. Like, it'll be like GTA, you got five stars, like, all the time. <laughs> so, so it'll be like I'm Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, all the time. Except he can take his mask off and go home. Yeah, that's true. We know who you are. Right. And that's why I want you to find him without finding out who he is. So uh, her, the, the entire book is just Herman having a meltdown. Like just shooting wow. Peter and being like, you don't know what it's like, I'm a smart person and I, I got screwed over by corporate America and they don't even care about you and they run everything and everybody cares about Nick Fury and they think he's in charge, but no, actually it's these awful corporations that put like, you know, cancer pills in your cornflakes and it's not uh, blah. It's just like, okay. Okay, okay Bendis. Let's have a moment where you can yell about the injustices of real life through the mouthpiece of this head case. Of a does, super does he villain. yell about chemtrails and shit? He does not. No, no, yeah, no, like, no. Are I, we I'm supposed to joke. sympathize with him? Because he, I mean, he's a bad guy. You can't not. Right. But I mean, I think it's more like these are the dangers of complacency. Like right. people fall through the cracks, and if you're not careful, they'll become shockers. <laughs> I mean, not literally, because that's impossible, but no. the modern equivalent. Lowercase like s. the Unabomber. <laughs> exactly! He is the supervillain equivalent of the Unabomber. Like, while he's blasting at him, you know, Pete tries to like, connect to them in some way. He's right. like, I, he's like, I, shut up! Well, I feel bad for you. And he's like, right. that is not what you should say to me. Uh, uh, but, you know, so uh, eventually, Shocker just like, he's, he's just screaming at him and zapping at him. And he zaps him so hard that he knocks him out of the chains. Uh, and he's like, oh. I shocked him too hard. And Pete is just like, okay. Now I'm gonna beat you, Savage. <laughs> <laughs> like, he doesn't say anything. It's actually just a big dramatic moment where he's just like, he's, I have no quips for you. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna kill you with my bare hands. Uh, now no, I'm gonna just, beat you to death in your own basement. That's right. So he's just wailing on him and then Kitty shows up. She's like, hey, hey stop. You don't kill him. He's like, I wasn't gonna kill him. I was just gonna break every goddamn bone. I was gonna beat him, him. In an inch of Oh, his you life. weren't? Because yeah. his head is already caved in and he's dead. Right. He's dead. You punched him across the room and he has no powers. Oh. Oh my god. Oh, then I'm gonna right. need your phasing powers to phase him into the core of the earth. <laughs> there is no shocker. Where you put there never all... was a shocker. I don't just, even know. What, I, I, I never knew anyone. Just phase him about 100 feet below us. It'll yeah. be yeah. fine. Listen, just. Yeah. Where you put all your problems. That's. I know you do that. We're gonna amazing. Do right? <laughs> just. What a good idea. How would she get out of the center of the earth, though? She seems to be, well, uh, I mean, she can she go stays all the way material. to the end and go back and just take a flame from uh, from Australia. No, no, but she, you'd get stuck in the middle. Oh, yeah. Because you fall to the middle. Gravity pulls you into the middle, but what's well, going to pull you back out? Oh, yeah, yeah. You have to claw your way out. That's why Ben suggests, go, go down like 100 feet down. 
you know. Yeah. He may be drill like Still, same problem. How do you go up? I know how you go down when yeah. you're phasing through she, things. No, she can still phase through solid material. Yeah, but how does she get the force to go up? Yeah, what does she Gravity push pulls her against. down. But how does yeah. she push up? She just phases like the outer layer of her skin on her foot, on and then that pushes thing off. To push that while yeah. the rest of her is so not. She phased. like steps up through things. That would take forever. Makes every. But at 100 feet? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Yeah. That'd I be mean, cool. 100 feet is still it's a 10 story building. Yeah. It's, it would take a little bit. See, I figured if any part of her materialized inside of something, she would it die. would be stuck. It would be ripped off of her. Yeah. But that doesn't happen. We've already right, proven but it. No, we've seen it doesn't happen. Because how could so... she phase through walls and not the floor every exactly. time? Exactly. Right. So, you know, it's magic. <laughs> Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Like we did for most of the episode. <laughs> so anyway, he's like, how'd you find me anyway? And she's like, your girlfriend is like an investigative reporter, apparently. She's amazing. Like, you're, She's an amazing girlfriend. And he's like, so are you. Mm, Don't say really. that, Peter. Don't say that. <laughs> Listen, Mary Jane's not here. And Kitty needs to hear that. She's right. Here. So then the police show up. They're like, hey, everybody freeze. And the Kitty's like, okay, we had a deal. And he's like, yeah. And they're like, Captain, where, where the hell are these fugitives going? And he's like, it was the deal. Like, we have, we have shocker. And then one of them goes, Oh my God, Shocker, this loser? <laughs> and Shocker's like, come on. What a joke. Oh, come on, guys. Yeah. How did Shocker get out in the first place? Wasn't he already arrested? Like, He's how been arrested he like 10 times. Escaping. I don't, they never explained that. And I'm, okay, let's say that maybe Rock's arm, pay, like, you know, kicks him out, you know, or mm -hmm. bails him out. I don't know. They never explain it. But he hates Roxxon. I, I, I know. I get the impression he had a falling out with Roxxon. So did. why would they? I, I don't know. Again, does this like, come up later it's just on? A, it's no. just a tropey thing. No, it's just like, I think that the way Bendis is thinking, he's like, I'm probably going to leave the book soon. I've done over 100 issues. Like uh, it's, so I should probably wrap up the Shocker story. Right, you know, we've made, We've been making fun of Shocker forever. Let's do one issue. Let's where we just, continue to make fun of him. <laughs> well, yeah, well, no, it's just like, but also, like Shocker has, has a some moment. points, though. Well, Shocker has a moment. And the, the sun even shies on a dog's ass sometimes. Like, that's <laughs> sometimes, no, we're not saying that Shocker is justified. We're saying that he makes some points that can be construed as accurate, but also he's a piece of shit. Right. Like, look, yes, you went to MIT. Yes, you've had these amazing, pro like, prototypes. No one put you in bed with rocks on. No one held a gun to your head and told you to like sell your like your greatest achievement to a goddamn like company that already had like disrepute. Right. Like you put yourself. Nobody told you to steal your own prototypes and then use them to rob banks in broad daylight. Like right. you're bad at all of it. The only thing you're not bad at is inventing them. Mm -hmm. Which you already did. You're you're like riding high off of a, of a like a like a, a late night bender in mid you know in 2003 asshole. Congratulations, you know that doesn't owe you don't owe anything. Right, right. Certainly especially not sympathy from superheroes. Especially in this world where there's like a thousand things like that. Well, and and like there are these avenues. gadgets like, are a dime a dozen. The Fantastic Four is a phone number. You could go to Nick Fury's apartment building. Like you could, you, I invented these things. They're weaponized, right. non-lethal, non-ammunition based vibration gauntlets. Right. If it's any good, they'll buy it. They'll buy it. Okay, and, Mr. Vibrator now, Hands. Whatever. I don't care if they make fun of me. I'm going to be a billionaire. Or they'll ghost me and steal my <laughs> shit. But even if they do, it's like, uh, I mean, look, it's the devil you know, the devil you don't know. Like one of them purports to be the you know the the top cop of the world and has like a, the Avengers on speed dial. The other one is a pretty shady uh, petroleum based company. <laughs> you know, this is what you, you knew. Got, what that's you his whole into. problem, though. Is that that's those are the those choices? Are the options. Yeah, or that's go, not fair. Go, go into business for yourself, man. You know, like I don't know how you sell these things. No, because but... Roxxon controls the banks. Like I can't <laughs> get a loan. They control everything. What? That's yeah. you're making significant leaps, man. That's, energy is would should be free, but oh. these petroleum companies like shit. Roxxon you know what? keep that technology down. I'm like the inventor right. of free energy. Put it in all your live journal, Herman. <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah, you know. also my vibrating gloves are a perpetual motion machine and right. can solve world hunger. Yeah. If so, only so rocks on. No, if only rocks on. They're oh, standing sure, in my way. They don't yeah. use energy, any energy. I mean, like, they seem to not. Yeah, Everything they do. Does. And they're miniaturized. Yeah. Yeah, limitless they did. free energy. I've got, got it right here. Right. But I can't monetize it because of that rocks on. Because I'm an idiot. 
No, it's Roxxon. No, I'm creative. No. <laughs> no, it's Roxxon. No, it's all them. Okay. I had perpetual like energy and they turned it into a weapon. You did. You <laughs> made them into guns, you asshole. Because they told me. They made me. Oh, God. They made me do this. Yeah, Herman sucks. They're making me punch say, you right now, Spider-Man. <laughs> they're making me kidnap a child and it's attack all them. him. Spider-Man's amazing friends are really... It's like you said. They don't... Do anything. It's kind of unimpressive. Yeah, it's completely yeah. unimpressive. No, if you read it, it's a great read. Yeah. It really is fun to see these characters interact. Yeah. And it's just because it is a joy. And it's such a departure from any other comic book you're reading. Like, unless it's deliberately so. Like, there's a, a, a current She Hulk series where it's all about like romance and stuff. And you're like, oh, okay. Who's it, the bad guy in this book? Herman. Exactly. And Magneto. No. Magneto. Why? Because he doesn't do anything evil, he talks to them. Yeah, but he well, tries he to coerce yeah. Firestar into joining his brotherhood of evil oh, mutants. Come on, yes. Come on, the yeah, he's the guy devil guy. on your shoulder. Yeah. Devil. Like, no, I get it. <laughs> That's still a bad guy. But he's not playing the villain part. He's not really this. villainous. He, he, he is a villain in he's the book. He's trying to read his father and his daughter. Yeah, but only to his own ends. He's even his daughter and her father. Yeah, yeah like it's because it's. He's trying to unite a broken family, but only to serve his own ends. When he when if. Liz had been human, then Blob would have been Wait a minute. Uh, prevented from meeting her. What? Where did that storyline go? Nowhere. Oh, do, do Liz, they bring it back? Yeah, Liz eventually. Went Liz, to uh, the yeah, Liz went to the X Men and yeah. then she gets trained. We, we yeah, but what happens to her dad and, and Nothing. Magneto? Why uh, are they even in the book? Oh, Blob eats Wasp and then dies. I remember Giant he Man ate bites wasp. his head off and throws his carcass away. There is no. Reunion between Liz and her father. Blob is. So why does it even suddenly. happen? Because we don't know that's going to happen yet. Because nobody asked Jeff Loeb to do anything. I can imagine Ben just like reading. Yeah, being like, be like, what? What? But I set up a whole storyline. Yeah. Well, that's you why weren't going to pay it off. You're Bendis. <laughs> I, I, don't tell me you were gonna finish that storyline. Yeah, please, don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. Lie, lie to yourself. Don't lie to me. <laughs> I'm Jeff Loeb. <laughs> Fair. Still, it's kind of messed up. I could, you didn't know you didn't, I wasn't going to finish that story. Look, I didn't read it, man. I don't know. I don't have to read everything. I wrote The Long Halloween. I don't have to read your goddamn melodrama about teenagers. You made it blob because you wanted to make a fat joke at the end. There's no integrity there. Oh, yeah, but yeah. having Blob eat no. Wasp is, has, is full of integrity. It's a schlock fest. I know what I'm doing, okay? <laughs> no one holds... It's graphic in a different way. Yeah, everybody knows what they were getting into when they watched Jason X, okay? No one was mad that it didn't have a good shot composition, okay? Or <laughs> or a good rising action and falling action, all right? It's a garbage movie and it's a garbage comic book I was making. But with this, everyone's just like, what X-Men on the Brother of the Immunes? Oh God, not Blob. Yeah. Not of blob. course it's Blob. Not Blob. <laughs> oh, please don't be Blob. Yeah, please we all jumped to Blob. Uh -huh, I made a Blob. Yep. It's Blob, nah, gotcha. <laughs> Yeah, haha. There's an implication that like her fire powers are like maybe because she was manifesting her powers and she was near Human Torch that maybe that's what oh, like, some like, part it's of not him onto her. not preordained what powers you'll get? Yeah, it's more like what you're like in proximity what's to or what you're when doing. your powers manifest? Yeah. It's like, kind of interesting. Well, they, they try to do that with the Fantastic Four as well like where, uh, you know, like uh, Reed, when the Cosmic Rays are hitting him, he's reaching for something, you know, like... Uh, the Human Torch is near fire, and uh, Sue is not being considered. So, you know, everyone becomes... Sue the... wishes she wasn't there. <laughs> exactly. And Thing is trying to lift something heavy. You know, I, like... I should have not been here today. Yeah. <gasps> wow. So, yeah. That, I like the idea of that, but I don't know if I, uh, I want that to be the case all the time. <laughs> Ultimate Spider-Man continues. The next volume is much bigger. The Venom oh, yeah. Returns. Oh, oh shit. boy. It's huge. And I was like, if... This was 30 minutes. We do it. But it wasn't. So next time. Probably next year. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Venom's coming back in a big bad way. It is insane. Uh, and I'm I'm ahead of the game. I'm Good. I'm, I'm very keyed into that already. I'm excited so, for it. Uh, yeah. This was just this was a, an everyday it kind of story. Very mundane. It was oh, like Oh, problems with friends, <laughs> yep. people dealing yeah. with their own identities. Yep. The biggest villain in the book is Shocker. Oh yeah. no. It was called Spider-Man as Amazing Friends because they're like, uh, it's like three or four issues in between events. Uh, I don't know what to call it. <laughs> I don't it. know what the hell to call it. Uh, you know who his Amazing Friends are? Happens. Kitty and Kenny. Yes, yeah. yes. Mary Jane, Kitty, maybe Johnny, not Iceman. Definitely not Iceman, who's just here. He just shows up because of the cartoon. Because of, yeah. It was fun. Yeah. It, Good book. It's a better read. 
I, I, I promise you, it's just mm -hmm. a fun read. You're like, oh man, you get sucked in. You're just like, yeah, that's that's what it's like to be young. Yeah. It's fun. And it doesn't end on a cliffhanger. No, it just no. wraps up. It's just like, there you go. Yeah. Enjoy. So rare for these. I know, it's true. They always really dovetail into each other. Uh, but you are kind of like, hey, uh, well, nothing happened. Yeah. So that, that's like a cliffhanger. Yeah. You're, you're like hungry for more. Right. Because you're like, something big's going to happen next, right? That's called an appetizer. Yeah. It's wetting your appetite. That's exactly mm. what this is. It is totally a demi toss. So we'll see you guys next week with an all-new episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Keep reading. The aperitif of, the aperitif. of, of Ultimate oh, Spider-Man. Love it. Yeah. How's uh, Eminem's art going for you guys? This? Yeah. Uh, I like good. it, other than the hair. Yeah. Uh, you know. I love it. I always love the art. But yeah. uh, but I understand the complaints. Yeah. It's just there's so many panels where she just looks weird. I'm yeah. just like, I don't recall it her looking like It still looks like the universe. Yeah. That's but yeah, right. it definitely feels like the first several books you know? the first like, 19 yeah it didn't volumes. like it's not a dramatic departure which is thank goodness yeah that would be a problem right